March 9, 2018 Lee Bailey is forever ready to share brutal opinions on the lawyers who have crossed him over the years. Marsha Clark, who in the midst of a row during the O.J. Simpson trial called him a liar? A harridan, he growls. His Simpson co-defense counsel and ex-friend Robert Shapiro. At least mildly sociopathic, David McGee, the United States attorney from Florida who doggedly pursued Bailey for helping himself to millions of dollars the government said was not his to spend? Totally dishonest. If F. Lee Bailey's your lawyer, you're his friend, you're his client, and you're innocent. Advertisement, continue writing below when former Dream Teamers, as Simpsons lawyers were known, failed to publicly proclaim the ex-football star's innocence following the 1997 wrongful death civil judgment against him, it felt like pure treachery. Barry Shack Cave, told Newsweek you have to respect the civil verdict, which you don't, and he never should have said it, Bailey says. By the time Simpson went on trial in 2008 on charges that he had liberated several items of his old sports memorabilia at gunpoint from a man in a Las Vegas hotel room, Bailey was the only one of those lawyers Simpson was still in touch with and, seemingly, one of the last people on earth still willing to assert publicly that the one-time legend hadn't murdered his wife. They talked on the phone several times before and during the 2008 trial. Having been disbarred in 2003, the old gunslinger Bailey could offer only informal advice. Fire your lawyer, he implored Simpson, who refused to listen. A jury convicted him on all 10 counts, and he was slapped with a 33-year prison sentence. Bailey hasn't heard from Simpson since the conviction, he says he was told that Simpson was warned by prison officials to steer clear of Bailey if he wanted to get on the good side of the parole board. Follow Town. I'm convinced the guy got screwed, he says. Bailey readily catalogues the failings of others but he takes a rare reflective pause before addressing what he might have done differently to avoid his own current predicament. Broke, disbarred, his legacy is one of the finest trial lawyers in American history imperiled by two decades of controversy. Getty Images Advertisement, continue reading below, at 83, that's an almost impossible question to answer, he says, his single malt baritone worn raspy by decades of dominating courtrooms and conversations. I would do things differently only with the benefit of hindsight, and that's a chance that life never gives you. At the time I did things, I thought they were right. Bailey sips a glass of Pinot Grigio at lunch one fall afternoon at the Royal River Grill House, his favorite restaurant in his adopted hometown of Yarmouth, Maine, just north of Portland. He's a celebrity there and, to his obvious pleasure, much fussed over. On his way in, Bailey stops a waitress in the midst of pouring a drink to tell her that he has broad press from a national magazine, if the magazine had a gatefold, I'd get you in it, he says. Next to him sits Debbie Elliott, his girlfriend of seven years. A pretty good-looking 62, he remarks, an accurate assessment of the curvaceous salon owner, who is dressed in head-to-toe black, her platinum blonde hair pulled back in a ponytail. Bailey, who in the 1970s wore sideburns so bushy they resembled a barrister's wig, now has thin white hair clipped close to the scalp, a side effect of cohabitation with a hairdresser. Bailey and Elliot fell first in love, then into business, taking over the little apartment above Salon Debbie Elliot in a two-story shingled building in Yarmouth to open a business consultancy called Bailey. Bailey often offers clients advice while Elliot trims their hair. It's very convenient, he says. I enjoy being F. Lee Bailey, Bailey wrote in his 1971 bestseller, The Defense Never Rests, the first of his 20-some books. Despite the legal and financial difficulties that have bedeviled him, he clearly still can't help enjoying it. When he wrote those words he was 38 and the most sought-after criminal defender in the country. A trio of high-profile court victories landed him on the cover of Newsweek in 1967, just six years out of law school. I enjoy being F. Lee Bailey. Most notably Bailey had fought all the way to the Supreme Court to overturn the conviction of Sam Shepard, a neurosurgeon imprisoned for killing his pregnant wife the case would inspire the movie The Fugitive. Bailey successfully argued that prejudicial media coverage of Shepard's 1954 trial had tainted the jury and created, in the court's opinion, a carnival atmosphere, ironic given that Bailey, in order to sway public opinion so that Shepard would be allowed a polygraph test, went on the Mike Douglas show and strapped comedian Dodie Goodman into one of the machines. Getty Images Advertisement, continue reading below Bailey delighted in flaunting the trappings of his status. In his first book he wrote of his, intelligent, unreasonably attractive blonde, second wife, Wiki, and the Learjet he piloted around the country. Money can buy a certain amount of happiness, he wrote in his second memoir, in 1975, cataloging those happinesses, a Mercedes 350 SL, a Citroen Sum, and a helicopter that he could land inside the 
circular driveway of his property in Marshfield, Massachusetts, an aircraft that at the push of a button would be plucked up by a space age assembly and deposited safely inside a hangar. By then he had moved on from Wiki and married a key stewardess Linda Hart. He would meet his fourth and final wife, Patty Shires, a United Airlines stewardess, on a flight from Boston to San Francisco in 1976, for at least one day Linda unwittingly sat just a few seats from her husband's next wife in the gallery at Patty Hearst's trial. He was a handful, Linda, who has remained friendly with Bailey, tells 